Chucky Dickies. There! Count Duckula, the most terrifying yet hilarious duck in animation. You might not have expected cartoons about vampire ducks to be so popular, but after learning about 1979's short-lived Count Duckula from The New Adventures of Mighty Mouse and Heckle and Jekyll, you'll probably change your mind. Danger Mouse, another amusing cartoon by Crossgrove Hall of Films, inspired Count Duckula. Duckula was a completely different reoccurring evil character in that program, but he would receive a drastic shift in his own show. He's still a vamp duck looking for popularity in showbiz, but a tomato ketchup infusion eradicated his evil character and urged to suck blood. Geraldine Layburn, who ran Nickelodeon for most of the 1980s and 1990s, wanted the channel to have another program by Cosgrove Hall Films. Count Duckula had piqued her interest, and the rest is now history. Before we get too deep into our explanation, we do have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us it means a lot. Thank you, and let's begin. Bolt 10, give her the jolt! What was the show all about? Count Duckula is a British children's cartoon horror television series developed for Nickelodeon by Thames Television. Count Duckula ran for four seasons from September 6, 1988 to February 16, 1993, totaling 65 episodes, each around 22 minutes long. All of them have been released on DVD in the United Kingdom, however, only the first show has been released in the United States. In the 2015 Danger Mouse reboot series, a new iteration of Count Duckula appeared. A number of monthly comics and annuals recounting the exploits of Count Duckula and other characters were issued throughout the run of the show and for a short time after that. Danger Mouse inspired the creation of Count Duckula. Danger Mouse, which had become a success for Nickelodeon, was bought by the channel in 1984. After a few years, Nickelodeon executives approached Cosgrove Hall to co-produce a new show. After being shown a variety of concepts, Gary Leiborn, the then head of Nickelodeon, noticed a photo of Count Duckula inside Brian Cosgrove's office and exclaimed, that's the one I want. As the story progressed, one of the authors proposed that the Count could be made vegetarian, which brought an even sillier premise to the series. Duckula's journeys and quest of wealth and glory are frequently featured in the stories, aided by the castle's capacity to teleport throughout the world. Another reoccurring subject is a figure named Igor and his constant attempts to transform Duckula into a genuine vampire. Dr. Von Gooswing, Duckula's antagonist, is modeled after Dr. Abraham Van Helsing, Dracula's nemesis, and is a vampire hunter who refuses to accept that the current form of Duckula is harmless. There is also a slew of strange, often otherworldly adversaries, ranging from zombies to mechanized werewolves. Several episodes address the notion that each resurrection generates a unique incarnation with next to no recollection of its previous existence, with the current father being the immediately prior incarnation. As a result, each rebirth is free to form its own identity and follow its own specific interests. The vampire is able to assume the identity of a member of a formidable dynasty as the Count of Ducula. Previously, generations of these seemingly vicious vampire duck including warriors, warlocks, scientists, painters, Egyptologists, and even professional gamblers. No, it's not. It is ya. Not ya. Yes. Exploring the first few episodes and the overall story arc. Count Duckula is an arrogant vegetarian vampire duck that dwells in a place that allows him to roam wherever he wishes. He stays with his servants, Nanny, his huge and foolish nanny who is always slinging her arm, and Igor, his wicked butler. While Nanny inadvertently ruins furniture and Igor seeks to convert the broccoli-eating duck to the evil side, a vampire hunter waits nearby with a wood stake and a gun and unsavory intentions. Though Duckula is a spin-off of Danger Mouse, the comedy in the show is entirely separate and unique. As stated in the title sequence, this newest incarnation did not go as planned. The ritual's effective completion demanded blood, the supply of nutrition for every vampire, but it was unintentionally switched with ketchup. As a result, the latest version is a vegetarian vampire rather than a blood-sucking one. Igor is shocked. He'd rather eat delicious carrots than seek for victims. What's even worse, the newest vampire is focused on achieving fortune and popularity as an entertainer. In the debut episode of the series titled No Sax Please, We're Egyptian, we're introduced to our titular character, Count Duckula the most recent of a long string of vamp barons who has been having difficulties. Nanny's carelessness nearly kills Duckula while he was waiting for his morning meal of hot chocolate and chalky biscuits, and he decides that enough is enough. He wishes to renounce his title and flee to South America. Igor walks him around the castle's portrait gallery to present him a few of his aristocratic ancestors in order to tell him of his great lineage. 
Duckula questions Igor about his great-great-granduncle, Arkduck Maganza, while getting lectured about the images. Igor discusses Maganza's lifetime quest to locate the mystic saxophone, an instrument said to provide the player control over life and death. This intrigues Duckula, who wishes to find the saxophone himself and therefore fulfill Arkduck Maganza's mission. Duckula, Nanny, and Igor use the castle's teleporter to travel to Egypt in search of the saxophone. The Crow Brothers, a gang of criminals who had previously overheard Igor talk about the mystery of the mystic saxophone, saxophone have unknowingly joined them. The two parties set out to find the saxophone and chaos ensues. No, Lenny. Lenny, wait, I'm back. In the second episode of the series titled Vampire Vacation in Transylvania, Count Ducula and his household retainers have to deal with a lot of rainfall. Ducula wants to go on a getaway so he can forget about the dreary environment, so Igor recommends they fly to Spain and meet Don Diego, Ducula's raging maniac relative. But when Castle Ducula shifts to Spain, he is greeted with a nasty shock in the form of his stately home bursting into flames. Nanny accidentally puts out the fire, which annoys the local residents, who have them all put in prison until they locate Don Diego, who intends to chop the locals up and welcome some other vamps as attendees to join in. So quickly, Don Diego attempts to strike a deal with Ducula. Ducula eliminates the most evil-tempered bull, and he agrees not to kill a single one. However, this proves to be much harder than it appears. In the third episode titled One Stormy Night, on a moonless and rainy night, Count Tequila is just being told a horror story, which he quickly abandons to go get himself some food. In the meantime, Dr. Von Goosewing is in some other wing of the castle working on a monster that he believes would wipe off Duckula. In an unfortunate turn of events, the lightning employed in Goosewing's experiment detours itself in the crypt-like cellar of Castle Duckula, in which it strikes a stone Duckula that comes back to life, producing a new wicked Duckula that seeks to brutalize humans. While Duckula is looking for bread for his treat, the stone Duckula orders Igor to grab him a shovel so that he can kill and dump victims. Igor accepts and takes instructions from both the actual and stone Ducula. Nanny tries to hide in the attic, attempting to escape from the non-existent beast from the tale that was being told to Ducula, in which only seconds ago, Von Goosewing's monster awoke and made its glum way to look for the headache pill. Von Goosewing sets out to discover his experimental monster and make it bring an end to Ducula's reign. <laughs> In the fourth episode of the show titled Transylvanian Homesick Blues, Count Duckula has plans to go to the fun fair with his household helps, Igor and Nanny. Duckula intends to ride a roller coaster and convinces the others to accompany him. Dr. Fazakerly Time operates the roller coaster, which has been dubbed the Roller Coaster of Time. Dr. Time claims the roller coaster can transport them all back and forth in time. Their first journey is to prehistoric Earth, where they encounter the first vampire tens of thousands of years before they would be born. After a short while, the gang is is assaulted by a furious dinosaur that the ancient vampire had bitten, forcing them to flee. Their second destination is in the distant future, namely 4008, when the Earth is dominated by vegetables. Time announces to the gathering that an artichoke has just been elected as President of the United States. Dr. Time tries to flee without Dracula and Igor, but they get on the roller coaster just as it's about to leave. Their third and last destination is in France in the year 1789, during the French Revolution. Time notifies the French rebels that he has seized a wealthy Ducula for them, expecting to have him imprisoned once more. The revolutionaries, however, jail all of them, even Time, due to their amusing clothes. In the fifth episode of the series titled Restoration Comedy, Count Duckula wakes up screaming from a hideous dream. Nanny and Igor come to check up on him, Igor bringing some breakfast with him. The Count refuses to eat anything at all, claiming that he ate a giant, horrible, meaty hamburger in his dream. Duckula concludes that he's feeling depressed because the castle has now become dark and dumpy and is a vast, dilapidated monstrosity, but Igor vehemently disagrees. The Count makes up his mind that the house is in desperate need of redecoration despite Igor's pleas. He places an advertisement in the newspaper announcing openings for an interior designer. Mr. Roberto, a designer to the stars, goes to the Count with his two workers, offering him his services and claiming that he can bring light and air into the dilapidated old building. Dracula offers him a tour of the castle, with Roberto claiming and regarding changes that can be made all over the place. Nanny and Igor are displeased with Roberto's suggestions and discuss this amongst themselves. Igor decides that they have to take a stand, and to do so, they must go on strike. But that is going to be the least of Dracula's problems because the troublemaking Dr. Von Goosewing is not too far behind. Huh. Hello. Who might you be? Yes, I got that. No, who might you be? I know, I know, you said that already. So you will not... Marvelous Verdict. 
a creative and intelligent show with loads of dark humor. Cosgrove Hall is considered to be one of the country's best creators of British animation. The company, which was responsible for the brilliant cartoon Danger Mouse, was a huge success. The studio decided to develop a spin-off from a unique character and eventually produced another fan favorite after an issue of Danger Mouse named The Four Tasks of Danger Mouse. Count Ducula was a fantastic animated cartoon series that was a major fan favorite at the time and has an interesting plotline that is shockingly rare nowadays. Its theme tune was also quite good. Although not as bizarre and strange as Danger Mouse, this thoroughly enjoyable animation ran for 65 episodes. The cartoon had a significant fan base, and many of us look back on it with a sense of happiness as a piece of our childhood. It was based on the Count traveling the world while making dismal jokes. With regular performers like David Jason and Jack May providing voices, the series never lost its charm, and it's still easy to chuckle at truly iconic installments like The Murderous Penguins and the series opener No Sacks Please Were Egyptian. In truth, Count Docula serves as a stark reminder of how good childhood cartoons once were. This animation classic is a nice, innocent contrast to the violent animations like Thundercats or Transformers before everything turned manga-oriented. It had intrigue and, by cartoon standards, a bit of intensity, such as the hostile vegetables from the distant future and the accidentally alive figurine of villainous Docula in two episodes, which were incredibly unsettling for a young child. Still, it always ended on a gentle note and just never took itself too profound. Profoundly. Cosgrove Hall probably had no idea how successful this spin-off from Danger Mouse would be when they chose to make it. Count Ducula, which is always amusing and humorous, is a throwback to a simpler time, a period of innocence and joy. That thing catches up with us, Nanny. Come on, Doc, let's get out of here. <laughs> Looking back at Count Ducula and some memorable characters from the show. Count Ducula, our titular character, is a tiny green duck with a black combed hair and classic vampire evening clothing. While being portrayed as a British man, he speaks an American accent. He has no fangs and is vegetarian. His favorite food is broccoli sandwiches. He has a highly modern perspective and frequently laments the conventional vampire persona he is required to portray. He despises living in a gloomy, dreary castle and finds his servant's behavior unpleasant. Ducula constantly displays his displeasure for Eager's efforts to turn him back into a respectable vampire, and resents his rebukes for Ducula being a shame and an embarrassment to the family. However, he has some vampiric powers and attributes such as the ability to teleport and an image that is invisible to mirrors, and additionally holds a weak ability, observed just once, to emit a lightning flare when enraged. He frequently walks outside during the day without having any adverse effects. However, this is most likely due to his lack of a complete conventional vampire status. Count Ducula temporarily becomes a real vampire, demanding blood from the people outside of the castle, mainly to Igor's joy, thanks to a serum given to him by Von Goosewing, which he assured would render Ducula useless, but he is reverted to normal by night. Ducula's disposition is kind and loving, and he is constantly attempting to assist the people who need it, often with mixed effects. Despite his aristocracy, inherited castle, and dedicated servants, he is frequently poor to the point of being bankrupt with multiple episodes highlighting his inability to pay basics, with him even stating that he hasn't really been able to afford to pay his light bill ever since he was revived. Because Count Ducula is continuously penniless, so he is susceptible to short-lived passions, which frequently constitute the narrative for episodes, including striving to be a blues musician in New Orleans or searching for gold. The character is vastly different from his Danger Mouse forerunner. Apart from the moniker, the only thing they have in common is that they are each vamp ducks with showbiz dreams but no genuine aptitude. The earlier version was a wicked villain eager to intimidate and worm his way into fame, in contrast to the present Count, who only attempts to get in legal manner and is obsessed with being a TV star, rather than even earn fame in any other kind of entertainment. Ducula, in the original depiction, possesses significantly more magical abilities and employs them more frequently. He speaks with a strong accent that includes lisping, stuttering, and occasional squawks. Most notably, in the Danger Mouse version, he was not a vegetarian, threatened to swallow Danger Mouse's blood on his initial appearance, only to be scared away by the sun. The Ducula in Danger Mouse was burned and reduced to ashes, before being reborn at Aquarius's 8th astronomical house. During his most recent look in the 2015 relaunch, the newest Ducula is a hybrid of the classic and his vegetarian spin-off. Igor, Ducula's butler, provides a somewhat dark edge to most of the series' humor. He despises his master's behavior and frequently urges him to act in even more heinous ways. Although he would typically fulfill Ducula's particular commands, he is persuaded that if he could just get Ducula to bite, maim, torture, and otherwise brutalize people, he would revert to the good old days of the prior counts, who acted more like wicked vampires. Igor despises phrases like, bless you, nice, excellent, and beautiful. He cringes at such remarks, since he enjoys the heavier and 
more evil side of existence. When he mistakenly drinks Goosewing's carpet stain treatment chemical, his disposition transforms into a highly sweet-natured personality and becomes anxious to aid Goosewing in eliminating Duckula. He's a hunched, balding, sophisticated vulture with a heavy, slow voice who enjoys the macabre. He claims to have served for seven and a half millennia in the segment Arctic Circles, implying that Igor is either immortal or very long-lived by some unknown methods. It is unclear if the seven and a half centuries represent the whole 17 Count Ducula lineage, or if Igor has just served the most recent few incarnations. The segment Dear Diary hints that Ducula lineage is over 2,000 years old by suggesting that exposing the extent Count to sun will turn him into a 2,000 year old mound of rubble. However, the episode The Rest is History implies that not only has Igor been with the bloodline since the very first Count Dracula, but he is also fully accountable for the first Count turning into a vampire, as a person who is remarkably similar to the show's modern Igor in both looks and speaking style plans to have the first Dracula be struck by a bat. The precise reasons behind this are unknown, but his efforts are ultimately effective, much to the displeasure of the contemporary Duckula. Duckula's nanny and maid is named Nanny. She is extraordinarily tall. It is revealed in the episode Alps a Daisy that she is seven feet tall. She's a bumbling hen with a heavy Bristolian accent, and her right hand is strangely constantly in a sling, despite her enormous strength and inability to complete any work. The installment No Sax Please Were Egyptian discloses the nanny's carelessness resulted in the deaths of three previous Castle Ducula chambermaids. However, this is immediately discounted by the others because they were merely part-time employees. Nanny has a weakness when it comes to doors, and she frequently smashes through them without first opening them, or she goes straight through all the walls, especially if she is a few feet away from the entrance. She is, predictably, the one who confuses tomato ketchup for blood in the Count's current reincarnation. Amnesia's first name is revealed in the episode Primetime Duck. Nanny may possibly be eternal, since she is shown with Igor assisting Duckula's great-grandfather in a prologue set upwards of a century before the show's current day in the installment Dear Diary. She is highly foolish and wholly untrustworthy, yet she is passionately dedicated to her ducky booze, as she refers to the Count, and has a profound maternal affliction for him, despite the fact that her clumsiness frequently causes him injury. Her inability to grasp what others around here are saying is reoccurring humor. She often mispronounces phrases and takes offense at talks that are not meant for her. She is sassy and motherly, holding Ducula so firmly that he nearly suffocates. When she unintentionally consumes the carpet stain cleaner potion made by Goosewing in Dr. Goosewing and Mr. Duck, she becomes incredibly clever. Dr. Von Goosewing is a satire of Abraham Van Helsing, who is a crazy scientist and vampire hunter. He is a goose who speaks with a German accent and dresses similarly to Sherlock Holmes. He obsessively follows Count Ducula, never realizing that Ducula is absolutely harmless. He is a horrible scientist, sometimes being injured by his own wacky creations. He is also incredibly unobservant, frequently bumping into Duckula and conversing with him for many minutes without recognizing to whom he has been speaking. Von Goosewing seems to have a personal aide named Henrik, who is never seen on film. Von Goosewing frequently summons Henrik and blames his shortcomings on him. Henrik looks to be a fiction of Von Goosewing's mind, a fabricated companion. Please, my lord. We are going on a cruise! But, my lord. Yeah. Conclusion. Count Dracula is a fantastic cartoon in every sense of the term. It contains superb dialogue that is supported by dark humor and innovative phrases. The circumstances are incredibly amusing and maintain the viewer's attention throughout. The comedy is mild, yet it finds a way to make both children and adults chuckle. Duckula gets the finest lines, but Nanny and Igor's odd senses of comedy add a lot to the picture. Nanny is unintentionally amusing, while on the other hand, Igor is nasty and vicious, but it makes him appear funny. The supporting cast is also excellent, and the opening music, timeless. The final credits are remarkable. You won't be disappointed if you revisit this hidden gem, because it is one of the finest cartoons ever created, owing to its universal appeal. It features a fantastic and original tale that will keep viewers interested until the very end. And as always, if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone. Hey, that's kind of spectacular. We'll charge people extra to see that. <laughs>